so here we go. Yeah, so so uh, array jobs. So for a refresher, let's could we could we run the previous uh, oh. CGA job that we previously run? So uh, like run the same thing. Or... Yeah, maybe maybe we can run it so that we can then uh, look what we update uh, when it comes to the uh, array jobs. So in a CGL job, we had this script. So Richard is now finding the, Let's uh, see. the script. Is it hello.sh? Yeah. OK, yeah. Yeah. So here's a Siri, simple Siri script. So uh, we had this, uh, this SBAT statements that specified some resources that we uh, needed for, uh, for the R job to run. And then we specified those. And then we had this one magic line at the top, which specified that we want to execute them as uh, command, command line commands. And then at the end, we had something we wanted to execute. And these we often prefest with this S run parameter so that we get more uh, better out, better like information of what the job was actually doing. So this was the basic structure of a serial job. And we ran these uh, yesterday. So what if we want to run uh, the same serial job, but for multiple different, let's say, data sets? We, we have the same code and we want to run it on a multiple different data sets. Mm -hmm. Or we want to like switch one parameter there uh, between each run. So we want to submit, let's say, 10, 100 uh, of these serial jobs. So one solution, of course, would be to just copy paste the, uh, like take copies of the same serial job, uh, like the SH file, mm -hmm. and make small additions there, like small changes to the parameters and, oh. and, and what arguments we give to our code that we want to run, yeah. maybe a different file or something like that. But that can get unwieldy uh, really quickly. And uh, also it's not best for the queue system itself. Mm -hmm. So there is a better way. And this is a structure that is written into the, uh, to the Slurm itself, which is this array uh, structure, which, which basically tells us that like by specifying this array, uh, like this S batch comment, similarly to the other S batch comments that we have in the serial script, we can tell Slurm to launch basically identical copies of the same job, like at the same time, we, it can launch 10, 100, 1,000. Usually if you go above 10,000 or something, or if you start to begin being the thousands, you should probably ask us if, if mm -hmm. that's the best way of doing it. But usually you can run like huge number of jobs anyways. Uh, and what what the Slurm then does is that basically it, it does the copy, copy uh, pasting for you. It like basically launches all of these different jobs individually. So you get like, so let's say you have an array running from zero to 10. Uh, it, you will la launch 10 jobs at the same time. So Storm effectively thinks they're different jobs, but similar with a slight difference somehow. Yes. So, so the Slurm okay. will basically like take all of the rest of the script as it is like if, if the rest of the script would be written without the array statement the slurm will will take that like identically for each of these jobs well this sounds like okay we didn't like now we're running 100 times the same thing <laughs> what does that like why why would that be better like now we're running mm -hmm. the same thing 100 times but the main difference is that for each of these jobs Slurm gives this one environment variable, which is this array task ID. And that is a number. And that is the number of the array uh, index in question. So let's say you have running from 0 to 10. You would have 11 jobs going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And each of these jobs that are running independently in the cluster, each of these will get different number. So you're number one, you're number 10. So basically, if you think about like, uh, uh, you have a pack of cards and 
and you want to shuffle the pack of cards, you can split the pack of cards to like four pieces and give every mm -hmm. pack to your friends and everybody shuffles their own piece mm -hmm. and then you collect them back into together. Uh, so these, yeah. in this kind of way, like you can split, let's say your data uh, or you split your uh, mm -hmm. system in some way and each based on this uh, array number, each different mm -hmm. person does a different thing. Or if you want to do the kitchen analogy again, like let's say you have four cooks in the kitchen. One makes pasta, one makes, uh, or one makes uh, the like uh, a ravi. I don't know. One makes the sauce, one makes uh, grates the cheese, and one yeah. one puts the plates on. And like, everybody chooses their uh, work based on a schedule on the on the uh, that what, they have on the wall. So. Would a better first... analogy for array jobs be like you have different homes all producing the pasta separately mm -hmm. and then you all yeah, that... bring it to the same picnic or something? Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's so a good analogy as well. Like kitchen like, one does something, kitchen two does something. Like they all have the same instructions and they have a sheet saying number one makes uh, pasta X number two makes box to Y and you give the same instruction sheet to all the homes and you say, okay, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three. And mm -hmm. then they look at their instructions and do that line. Maybe, maybe we should, now that we have like should the basic we? idea explained with analogies that are not yeah. necessarily <laughs> primed in the whole thing, maybe we should yeah. view the first simple array job that mm -hmm. you might want to run. Okay. Uh, and yeah. And we were thinking that uh, like we will run this now and after like you can watch this demo you can watch it mm -hmm. but after this you can try it out yourself to see yeah uh, if you uh see how it goes yeah so everything we just skipped over in the lesson is what we've been talking about so we're getting to the real time okay yeah. so should i so do this <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that into a new script. Okay. File. So um, let's write our first array. Uh, array. Uh, array dot sh, I guess. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Mm. So we start similarly as we did with the serial jobs. So we first determine like the interpreter we want to use. So we add the magic line at the start, and then we add the same time. Uh, time and memory requirements what we want to use and these time and memory requirements are independent for each array job so you don't have to do any multiplications in your head like how many how do you split up the time it's like each worker each array task will get run runs for 15 minutes with 200 megabytes of memory mm -hmm. in the output file we have something strange going on uh, so we have few of these wild cards mm -hmm. that Richard has written there. So this percent signs, and these are like the the these are the percent capital A is the, uh, the like the uh, like common job ID jobs. for the whole array job as a whole, mm -hmm. and the sm uh, smaller case A will be the um, the array. ID for the individual task. So you will get output from all of these into individual files. We don't want everybody to write into the same file because it can become hard to read what the job is actually doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, and now we are running array from zero to 15. Yeah. yeah and let's add here like a... Uh, no. I'm copying this. There we go. Yeah, let's add it in. So, so this now, is hmm. the number that tells the job who it is. Yes. So we, what we expect, like like you remember yesterday, we had these um, scripts that had these environment variables in them, and they were the environment variables were only initialized when the job was running on the compute node. So similarly, this array task is only initialized. Like we have this dollar sign and this specific name for this vari mm -hmm. variable but then we uh, when when the job is actually running it's going to be replaced by some number mm -hmm. so should we try running it again? or yeah, are we do you want, want to add more? like a sleep there like a small mm -hmm. sleep there so Bef we can before see. or after 
Um, both is probably fine, just as, so that yeah. they don't go through the queue mm -hmm. too fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, are we good to go? Yeah. Okay. Control X to save. Y. Enter. Okay. Here we are. Now let's uh, submit, I guess. Yeah. We submit it similarly mm. to the serial jobs. We submit it with uh, a batch statement. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. let's slurm queue it. Yeah. So we know you notice that we submitted only one job uh, in like we submitted job one. But you see here when we look at the mm. queue itself, we have 15 jobs running. And you notice on the right side, they are running on a different machines, like different mm -hmm. CSL machines. Uh, and on the left side, you'll notice that they each have this underscore index. And this yeah. is the Slurm array task index. So basically, each of these tasks, zero is running on CSL 48. Mm -hmm. One is running on the same machine, but six is running at a completely different machine. And, like each of these are independent now, yeah. but Slurm manages to like launch all of these, uh, like basically do the copy pasting of the script that mm -hmm. you would have to do yourself. So it, you Slurm manages to launch all of these, yeah, um, like simultaneously. Okay. So let's and, see, should we Slurm queue again? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're all done. I want to look at Slurm history. Let's make it wider. Okay. So here we see, yeah, like all of these different array yeah. numbers, and they all look quite similar. So same steps, the same echo, the different nodes. If we go over, should we look at the outputs? Yeah, let's look at the outputs. So let's ls, and we see, OK, yeah, there's all of these here. That's the same number, the same thing. Let's yeah, catch so, so as, as Richard specified in the dash dash output part, like uh, argument for Slurm, uh, the, the different files had different outputs based on the, like the main number of the array job, like the main shared ID for the mm -hmm. full like big job. So basically you have one job that consists of smaller jobs that are basically identical with the exce exce exception of the array ID. Mm -hmm. So like when Richard is now concatenating this one, uh, one output, it's the output from that specific job and it will give you this specific yeah. ID that it was given. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I guess you can, since we have the whole power of the shell language here, we can do um, whatever we'd like here. Mm. And if I'm correct, the next section, okay, so this is all what we've done. Yeah. The next so, section gives a bunch of examples of how to use this. Yeah, so, so we will go through a few of these examples, but uh, we were thinking that it might be helpful for you to, to run this example now mm -hmm. so that you get a, like a grasp of what's happening. Because like after that, we will look how you can do this mapping between this array index and some di different parameters for your code or different data files. And like you can do all kinds of mappings from this no single number to even lots of complicated things so mm -hmm. so but but before that it would be good to get this grasp of what's happening yeah uh, like how do you run this array job uh, mm -hmm. like this most simple simplest case yeah should we give 10 minutes to for people to play around or yeah, yeah should we go you... for a, a async exercise time for 10 minutes yes and okay. we can also answer in the HackMD if you have any questions like uh, related to array jobs, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then we will uh, discuss, we can discuss them on the, after the exercise. Okay, so until 31.
Yeah, so so just to reiterate, not the exercise one, let's do mm -hmm. the the same example that we just did. Uh, so the first example on on this page. Uh, let's let's do that so that you can uh, test out uh, how to run an array job. Okay. Yeah. And let's see any important questions. Will the array jobs queue separately? So Slurm, so they basically do queue separately, but the Slurm manager can handle them efficiently. So it sees one thing that gets split into many separate ones. So as soon as there's room for the next one, it takes it off of the array queue and starts that. Yes, so, so all of these are like, they all, because they all start at the same time, they usually have the same priority. And we haven't yet talked that much about job priorities, but basically like if you have space to run 15 at a time, you will start the first 15. And once the first 15 are gone, then the next 15 will mm -hmm. start. You can also yourself limit, like there's option in the array syntax that you can limit the number of jobs you want to run concurrently. So you can limit the amount of jobs. Yeah as well so you you can say to the array that okay i want to run only 12 jobs at a time and this might be useful if you don't want to like make it so that the array jobs takes all of your priorities so you have leave something a little for yourself so that you can run interactive jobs at the yeah. same time as you run like an array job on the background or something okay so see you in a few minutes then bye we are back yeah hello yeah so um so there were good questions in hackmd like it was good to have this kind of a small little break so that we could like discuss it so mm -hmm. uh, i will read a few of these so uh first question was that is like memory requirements are they like multiplied divided anything like that with the average open no they are not so each of these rest of the Slurm statements or these uh, SBAT statements that you give or these comments that d define the requirements for your job, they are identical between each array job. And then there was another question that like, do the different jobs wait for each other? Like do the different array indexes uh, wait for each other? And the answer is no. Like they, they will uh, run parallelly uh, you can probably create a structure. I will have to think about that, but you can probably create a structure where you run them as like this kind of a dependency job. Uh, but mm -hmm. but uh, but that's more advanced uh, trickery. But in general, you want to use array jobs in this kind of a situation where you uh, want to run independent things together, uh, like you, independent things. You want to run independent things. Uh, and so each of these jobs should be considered as individual ones. So you can think of it as like, if I would just write instead of this term RI task ID, I would write here a number five. Would this job run uh, like independently? Would it run uh, as it as it is? And if to another, if I would change that number to seven, would it run uh, again? Like this kind of a mm. idea. Okay. So should we look at how do you, how do you actually utilize these array jobs? Should yeah. we look into that? So let's that's the more examples section here. So what are yeah. more examples of array jobs then? Yeah. So so if you know like uh, let's say the uh, the contours diagonal argument, if you're a fan of mathematics, uh, like you know that everything that is like countably infinite, you can like map to each other. So basically like if you have numbers from zero to infinity, you can map them to anything that you can count, uh, like not real numbers, uh, but, <laughs> but something that you have, like mm -hmm. how many apples do you have or how many yeah. people are for one number for each person in the world and so forth. And, and the, the same idea, like you can you can map these integers that you get from the array task ID, you can map to various configuration options, for example. Like you can map them to different parameters that you want to run your code in. You can map them into different data files that you want to analyze. 
you can map them to different code files that you want to use if you have like multiple code files. But the usual case is that you have this so-called embarrassingly parallel situation. So you just want to do a thing and you want to do the thing again and you want to do the thing again and then again, but with different uh, variations. And all of these uh, tasks are independent of each other, but you just want them all done. Yeah. And and in these cases, array is is the best option of use usage. Mm -hmm. So should we look down? First, we have reading input files. Yeah. So can you explain so, how this goes? Yeah. So so in the this example would be that you would take the array task ID. And then you would have in your code some structure that the code would like, let's say, read an input file and be, and it would read the parameters from line 20 uh, and then use those parameters. So so let's say your, oh, oh sorry, uh, you, your code would, uh, given an input file, you would give it an input file with a certain, uh, certain name uh, based on the ta task mm -hmm. ID. So you would so, have a number number there. So like here. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically you have some application and it takes input like the number zero file or something like that. So here you would rename all your input files to input data underscore zero, input data underscore one, and so on and so on. Yes. Yeah. And I guess if you don't want to do that to rename them, then the next option works. Yeah. Yeah, you can, so, you can. Should we scroll down? Yeah. Okay, so what's the next option? Hard coding arguments in the script. Yes, yeah, so so like like we yesterday mentioned, like there's for loops and all kinds of like command structures and code structures in the command line itself. Like the VAS interpreter can handle all kinds of like uh, structures. So you can, for example, use this case uh, case structure, uh, which basically says that based on the number of the Slurm array task ID, do something. And you can do this to, let's say in this example, uh, the uh, you can change the seed number for the, the pi generator that we previously tested out. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to run a code with different seed values. You can, of course, you use the array task ID as the seed value itself, but let's say it's some, something other, other you want mm -hmm. to choose. So you want to choose arbitrarily what you want to do, then you can uh, you can choose it based on the task ID. So this is a yeah. good way if you have, let's say, let's say you have like three algorithms that you want to test out at the same time. Like you want to test out three algorithms and you they, they, each of them has a different name and you want to like, based on the array task ID, choose which name of the algorithm to use. And then you give it as an argument to the, a code that you're using yeah okay of course your code has to like understand uh, the argument itself yeah so like in this case it's opening well yeah okay so okay should we continue going down parameters yeah, from one file down. yeah so let's say you have a like this file that contains like like parameters that you want to run, uh, like some some uh, uh, parameters. So in this case, let's say iterations that you want to use, like different iterations. You want to test out how the uh, code performs with, like in this case, the pi generating code. How yeah. does it perform with different kinds of iterations? This like this is like one D hyperparameter. So or like this kind of parameter mm -hmm. testing that you have parameter space that goes from so like, like you have you yeah. run from. But it's you like can, of course, zero. do it in. Yeah, so like here, the first array index is 100, then 1,000, then 50,000, mm. then what's that, 1 million? Yeah, and That's in the, the code itself, we use this, uh, like this uh, shell trickery as, again uh, to pick a correct line from the file. So we use this said function, uh, said program to get the correct file, uh, num correct uh, line in the file. What you might also want to do is like in your code itself, you would give it just the input file of the parameters and then you tell the code which line of the file it mm -hmm. should use. Mm -hmm. And then the 
program would read the input file and it would choose it so that you don't have to necessarily yeah. write it in shell mm, but you like, can like uh, write like a csv file of all of the mm-hmm. parameters you yeah. want to use and then give it as an uh, to the code itself to determine which line it should work yeah. on so like this thing here um yeah this is using bash to find a single line in a file but doing that in python or r or whatever would be probably better like I remember back when I did some work, I basically had a Python module that would define parameters for any given run number I'd have. And then in this case, I'd run an array job and just say array index like 50 through 60, and it would run that generation of runs and then would add in next 60 to 70 or whatever as I'm refining. Okay. Yeah, in one code I I uh, used, uh, I had this basically like like the array index. The array index can run from whatever number to whatever number. Like mm-hmm. there's no, I, I there might be some limit. Like I don't know, maybe in the in the billions. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. but basically, uh, you can put arbitrary numbers there. So what I had was that I had like it running from four thousand to five thousand, mm-hmm. and then it would mm-hmm. like divide the number by thousand and give it like a like a, as a decimal so you can use you can <laughs> okay. calculate straight from the array index yeah. some uh, some floating point if you want to like you can do all kinds mm-hmm. of trickery with this but it's it's all up to you how do you want to interpret the array indices yeah. so you I can th- you can also go the array that's... you don't have to go like yeah from zero to hundred you can go from two thousand to three thousand with the increment of ten or something yeah. like that I think that's sort of like here. So it says you have an array and then you do each array becomes a hundred other chunks or something like that. So if your jobs are too short, then you like split them up more. Yeah. In in the HackMD, there was a good question. And what was like, what is the, this, like, what is the optimal size of these individual array runs? So these individual jobs and, that is uh, like usually something of an hour or something like that would be. Um, uh, yeah, it depends on the system, but but the recommended is something of an hour. Mm-hmm. So so let's say you have a job that basically takes something in into into it, and it you need to do like let's say hundred thousand parameters, and you need to uh, each of these parameters takes only like minute to run so so you have this kind of a problem where like if you put hundred thousand array jobs each of them take a minute to run they are they will clog up the the queue and it's not fun you get lots of output files uh it's it's nothing it's not fun so what you might want to do is let's say put hundred jobs in a job like hundred uh individual uh like uh iterations into a one um one array job and then you have thousand array jobs so you have like thousand times hundred parameters Mm -hmm. and then you have thousand array jobs that run a chunk of hundred each yeah and and in the example there in the in the documentation uh, there's an example how you can like do this chunking like you have a for loop uh within the array job itself so if you are if you're facing this kind of situation where uh you have like a like huge number of parameters that you need to go through, and all of these iterations are very fast. Uh, you can clump them up together into like chunks. So basically, like instead of each array representing array index representing each like parameter, it might represent yeah. the hundreds of the parameters. So let's say the zero means uh, that you run parameters from zero to ninety nine, and mm-hmm. array index one means that you run the hundreds parameters and yeah. so forth like you might do all kinds of things like this uh, uh, to get stuff done but basically the idea of the array job is that if you have something that basically you would copy paste your code uh, you would copy paste the logic of the program like you would just need to do it a lot then you can use the array job and why this is better that let's say you have something that is like like the example i I presented yesterday the real world example where it mm. takes four hours to go through uh, all of these different um, 
uh, like GPU feature extractions. Like you can do it in less time by running it across multiple GPUs because each of these feature extractions is individual process. So you can just make an array job out of it and, and you run one feature extraction per, uh, per job. Yeah. Okay. Should we go to exercises? Maybe there yeah. can be 20 minutes for exercises and 10 minutes for break. Does that, yeah, that sound sounds good. good? So let's see. So we have two basic, well, one exercise where you're trying to run this uh, Python memory or yeah, the memory user with different parameters. Uh, something where you're mainly thinking about it. Maybe you can put the answers in HackMD, so how it works there. And then several advanced things you can play with, including Maybe. if you want to try something you can do basically like we said above. So iterations with Pi and then save them to different files and then combine them. Yeah, maybe maybe we should have like a like 15 minutes for exercises and 10 minutes as a break mm -hmm. and run the exercise one. Like that is the actual mm -hmm. like kind of mm -hmm. an exercise where you write this kind of yeah. like more advanced uh, structure. You can choose of any of the example structures that are in the page to use. Like all of them can handle this program uh, or this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so if you try out the exercise one, and then in the HackMD we can have a discussion. Like you can ask, let's say, if your pro problem would be something that could be parallelized with this array structure. Like, can you split your problem problem into these array jobs? Uh, then we can answer in the HackMD, so that we don't get too much overtime. So we do okay. These exercises. Like exercise one, uh, if you do it in code and access to, let's discuss in the HackMD. And... So array exercises until, uh, you said 15, maybe we could say, oh, oh, then is this good? Yeah. Okay. So see you in about 25 minutes then. Yeah. And for downloading the Pi file, if it's in that section description. So it shows how to get it here under in a Git repository. So um, see you later. Welcome back. Well, I guess we're the ones that are back, not you all. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess we'll go over the first array example. So Simo, yeah, would you go. like to demonstrate? Yeah, sure. Okay. It is your screen now. So let's check the first example here. Uh, just a second. So it was that we take the memory hog and we run it with different um, different kinds of uh, values of memory requirements. So I'll open uh, array dot sh. Let's name it like that, for example. And I'll do the usual liturgies. Hope it doesn't cut. Yeah. So we we want to have some memory limit for a job. Let's put uh, let's say 500 megabytes. Let's see how it performs. And let's add time uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And let's. So we had we want to do from 50. To 100, 500, 000, 5, 000. So we want to do an array of, uh, of five, so, so from zero to four. Mm -hmm. And we can choose now which uh, which way we want to do it, like which which kind of a structure we want to use. And 
for this kind of like we have a such a small number let's use the k structure for example yeah, that makes sense uh, so so for case i will put term array task id in zero let's put uh let's put an environment variable mem with a uh, 50m and then i'll uh, type another one mem what were the numbers 50 100 thousand and uh, Mm, oh, there's 500 as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have this Isaac uh, or case backwards <laughs> to close the thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So oh, that's that correct. So correct. So then we can, so so good thing to remember with these kinds of things is that like, I don't personally re remember these myself. I always look them up because mm -hmm. who has time to remember uh, or who has the capacity to remember all of these. The main thing to remember is the concept of an array job that you can do this mm -hmm. mapping. So uh, then you can, uh, you can do this kind of a thing. Uh, so I had it in, hopefully in this place. Yeah. So usually you have, like like I uh, mentioned in the first day, that argument. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. <laughs> so we need yeah. to use yeah. that. So does it require yeah, an I option think, or I think it maybe not. We can look at the uh serial jobs because who who wants to trust their own memory? So let's go to serial <laughs> yeah. jobs and let's look at the okay. syntax. So it was uh, or actually it was probably an interactive jobs. Mm. Yeah, without any syntax, yeah. So yeah, like it's. So now we give it the the mem parameter from here. I will also add here like a echo uh, requesting mem memory. Mm -hmm. amount, amount of memory so we get a should, bit more like should you use double stuff. quotes so that way the variable will be substituted uh yeah well then i can put like i think like this mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah yeah there's few ways because, of writing the same thing yeah uh, because in bash the single quotes would mean that the variables inside are not substituted yeah but i i omitted Mem. But they, it doesn't matter. That's oh, uh, different syntaxes yeah. for different things. Yeah. yeah. You left. Uh, okay. Different yeah. ways of writing things. And it, it, yeah. it's everything, as long as it works, it's it's fine. So let's submit this and let's see how, how it goes. So let's see if I can catch it before it, it's. Okay. It's now pending. And it's already run. <laughs> So what okay. we got was because we didn't specify the output file, we got four different outputs here. So let's go through them one by one. So the one tried to uh, use uh, yeah, 100 megabytes. The second one, 500 megabytes. The third one uh, tried to use one gigabyte and it succeeded. And the fourth one ran out of memory mm -hmm. because like in this job, 
the memory requirement was 500 megabytes for all of these. Each, each of them had a limit of 500 megabytes, but the last one asked for 5,000 megabytes. It uh, ran out of memory. The third one, which also had higher memory requirement, managed to run because of leniency uh, from the cluster side, but it might have failed for a longer job. So don't, don't do that. Uh, add that like a cor correct limit. So this is the, the basic structure of array jobs, and it's it, like the sky is the limit with this. Like you can, you can, you can also mix and match with the other parallelism that we're going to be talking about. But the basic idea that if you have something that you need to do like a lot, many times, mm -hmm. and all of them are independent, you can do it with an array job. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, if you have any further array job questions, please um... Oh, there's an interesting thing in HackMD here. Let's... Mm. Um... Let me select it. This one. So here's someone who used the array index as the memory directly hmm. so yeah i mean yeah this works why not like yeah there's nothing yeah. wrong with it it might start yeah. getting a bit complex when you have memory amounts too high or something hmm. but i mean yeah i mean it's definitely a correct well hmm. i guess it's your goal also... is to think of something clever and this is clever and correct Hmm. But there's also like a, a point uh, that we probably didn't mention about when we talked about serial jobs that it's good idea usually to write serial like the scripts uh, in a way that they are easy to read because that that way like the also the execution part of your workflow will be documented. So so basically, mm -hmm. if you write these serial jobs and you write these array jobs and you write them in a readable format and, and maybe add some comments here and there, it's easy to then afterwards look at the code and see what, how do you run it again? <laughs> like, how do you run it again? And, and if you, so, so usually it's a good idea to write them as like, uh, as, as code, treat it as a code and make it mm. readable. And that way it will like automatically document itself for you. And you can even add it to like the run scripts that you used, you can add them to the Git repository that you have mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. That way, it's easy for other people to replicate the results. They just need to run a similar kind of a job with similar kind of resources. Okay. So, so there's nothing wrong with the example. There, it's pretty nice. But, but I, I would add at least the memory and time uh, stuff there, so it is, uh, becomes uh, more clear maybe what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Re really nice solution, actually. A really uh, <laughs> interesting solution. Yeah. So let's see. Next up is mm, parallel stuff. 